So Warren Buffett just filed three new Form 4s with the Securities and Exchange Commission. For nine straight trading days, he's been acquiring millions of shares in one particular stock. A total of a little over $400 million invested into a company that he already owns a large piece of. Occidental Petroleum. Occidental Petroleum. Occidental CEO. Berkshire Hathaway bought another 901,000 shares of Occidental Petroleum last week. Chevron and Occidental Petroleum are the two most notable changes to the Berkshire portfolio in years tens of billions of dollars invested into oil companies. This is a big deal for Buffett. He almost never makes significant changes to his top investments. I partnered with Stockopedia for this video to share with you Buffett's rationale for betting big on oil and his specific reasoning for why he's loading up on Occidental Petroleum in 2024. Plus, later in the video, I'll show you how you can filter the global equity markets to quickly find businesses that fall under Buffett's investing principles. Occidental Petroleum is an American hydrocarbon and petrochemical company, which is just a fancy way of saying their business is oil and gas. The industry has three main types of companies, upstream producers who explore, develop and produce oil, NGL and natural gas, downstream producers who bring usable products to customers, and midstream operations which connect the two ends through storage and transportation. Since the company's inception in 1920, Oxy's primary business has been in upstream production. In 2023, they sold 234 million barrels of oil, or 640,000 barrels a day, mostly produced at their US sites in Texas, New Mexico, and Colorado, and to a lesser extent in the Middle East and North Africa. Across these sites, Oxy has almost 2 billion barrels of proved reserves, which is the oil they are confident they can extract from their sites. In the late 60s, they also entered the petrochemical business by acquiring the Hooker Chemical Company. Company. Today, OxyChem manufactures a wide variety of basic chemicals and vinyls, such as chlorine for water treatment and for use in pharmaceuticals, potassium chemicals for fertilizers, and PVC piping for the construction industry. And Oxy also has a midstream operations business, which includes transporting and storing services. Let's take a look at Occidental Petroleum on Stockopedia. They have institutional quality data on over 35,000 stocks, and for each they have what they call a stock report, with a bunch of helpful tools, which I'll come back to in a minute. But through their operations, Oxy produced $28 billion of revenue in 2023, a 23% decrease from the year before. Their profits also fell considerably to under $5 billion, and it's almost entirely the result of a single thing the price of oil. WTI crude oil, which is the oil from US fields, decreased 18% to just under $78 per barrel. Brent crude oil, which represents 80% of global crude contracts, also fell significantly. The price of oil is extremely volatile, and it's been even more so in the last couple of years. During the financial crisis in 2008, WTI crude was over $130 a barrel, and by early 2009, it was back down to under 40. During the 2020 pandemic, not only did the price of oil fall, in April, oil producers were actually paying buyers to to take the oil from them. Negative oil prices might sound absolutely ridiculous, but it actually makes sense. Demand for oil fell so sharply that the cost for buyers to store oil was worse than just paying someone to take it instead. Occidental Petroleum is vulnerable to wild and unpredictable swings of oil prices, but in 2019, Warren Buffett saw something more. Reuters reported that Buffett had made a $10 billion private stock deal with Oxy to help fund their acquisition of Anadarko Petroleum. He received 100,000 preferred shares in Occidental that paid an 8% dividend every year, and he also got warrants to buy up to 83.9 million shares for $5 billion. Warrants are like call options, in this case giving Buffett the option to buy shares for around $60 per share. But unlike call options, which are a contract between two different investors, two traders, 
warrants are an option to buy stock that is made with the company itself. So if Warren Buffett was going to exercise some of these warrants, then it would actually be Oxy that would be creating new shares and issuing them to Warren. Later that year, Buffett bought about 19 million shares on the open market, a stake that was worth $760 million at the end of 2019. Unfortunately, Buffett's timing for getting into the oil industry literally couldn't have been worse. Just a few months later, the pandemic crushed Oxy stock by about 75%. And in the second quarter, he sold all 18.9 million shares at a pretty significant loss. He did, however, still hold his preferred stock, which was paying him about $800 million a year. Due to Occidental's poor cash situation, they paid his dividend completely in stock, giving him 17.3 million shares in Q1 and another 11.6 million in Q2. Besides the preferred shares, Buffett decided to stay away from investing any money in Occidental until 2022, when he started buying up every share that he could. On Stockopedia, we can click over to the director's dealings page, which shows all of the inside transactions from executives, directors, and large owners of Occidental. It shows that Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway, bought a total of 124.5 million shares in the first three weeks of March. And he just wouldn't stop, buying another 65 million shares and bringing his ownership in Oxy to almost 21%. In August 2022, he got regulatory approval to buy up to 50% of the company, and he didn't wait long to use it. Buying another 17 million shares in March 2023, another 12.5 million in May and June, and finally 23.9 million between October 2023 and February this year. Which, when we look at the major shareholders tab, in Stockopedia brings his ownership to 28% of the company. Any shareholders who exceed their reporting thresholds of any country they're from will have their positions listed here. But as per the title of this video, he still isn't finished buying. The three latest insider transactions on Stockopedia show Buffett bought another 7.3 million shares just last month for around $400 million, which means that he now owns over 255 million shares worth over $16 billion, as well as about $8.5 billion of the preferred shares that he still holds. Today, Occidental Petroleum is Warren Buffett's sixth biggest position. I built the Berkshire portfolio in Stockopedia's folios feature so that I could keep track of his allocation and so I could view how his positions rank on a scale of quality and value. You can, of course, build your own portfolios in this feature by simply importing or manually adding your trading transactions, and their tools give you the power to compare stocks against their industry and market peers, as well as weed out low return stocks to help you build a stronger and more resilient portfolio. Buffett's large investments in Occidental Petroleum and Chevron will largely depend on what the price of oil does over the next one to two decades. Oil prices are the big determinant over time, obviously. But Buffett also concedes that he actually doesn't know what the price of oil will be in the future. So how can he have any confidence that the investments will do well? We don't know what oil prices will be, but we do very much like the Occidental position they have. While Buffett can't predict exactly where the price of oil will be in the next couple of years, he does think there's a strong chance that it will be higher over the long term. The price of oil is mostly dictated by a handful of factors on both the supply and demand sides. The long-term demand for oil has been steadily growing for decades, expecting to near 105 million barrels a day this year. And while oil and other fossil fuels will likely be used less over the very long term, as new technologies allow for more environmentally friendly options, the prospect of moving away from fossil fuels for overseas transportation and the industrial sector, for example, is just very far away. And on the supply side, most oil companies have very little interest in increasing production as it just hurts all of the companies. Even though I've spent a bit of time looking into this space, I don't personally think that I have a full picture yet of the supply and demand factors that are going to influence the price of oil in the future. But while you might say that Buffett can't exactly measure the upside, he can see enough factors that make higher prices highly probable. The late Charlie Munger also noted at the 2023 shareholder meeting that there's also a large amount of oil that is currently unrecoverable, but that he believes will be accessible by Oxy in the near future. 
there's, there's times a lot of oil down there that nobody knows how to produce, and they've been working at it for like 50 years. But they worked at the, at the existing shale production for about 50 years before they figured it out. And in the meantime, Oxy is already producing a ton of free cash flow. In Stockopedia, we can see that Oxy's price to free cash flow is just 11.4. On the cash flow statement, it shows they produced more than $6 billion in excess cash, and almost 5 billion of that was distributed to shareholders as dividends and via share repurchases. So add that on top of the 8% preferred dividend that he's receiving from his preferred stock, and Buffett is getting a lot of his initial investment back really quickly. In terms of financial health, the company fares pretty well too. They scored pretty well on Stockopedia's health trend scale, and they'd likely have scored a 9 out of 9 if it wasn't for the abnormal environment for oil prices that's been happening for the last couple of years. These health checks in Stockopedia are a really good way to help limit your exposure to potential losses. There's always, of course, going to be anomalies, but they're a great way to have a sort of a checklist that you can then do further research from. Oxy also scored reasonably well on the bankruptcy risk scale, and there's little evidence of earnings manipulation, which is a big focus point for someone like Warren Buffett. While we're in Stockopedia, I also just want to show you their stock rank system. They rank stocks between 0 and 100 based on proven factor investing principles of quality, value, and momentum. So Coca-Cola, for example, is one of Buffett's greatest bets, scored an 88 for quality, but only a 30 for value, and that's because they generate high returns on capital and have excellent margins, but the stock is pretty expensive given its limited growth potential. Another similar example is Apple, where the quality is excellent but the value rank is very low. This also may even explain in part why Warren Buffett has been recently selling down some of the holding, despite of course it's still making up more than 50% of the portfolio. Portfolio. Also, the traffic light system make it really easy to compare a company to its industry peers and the broader market. But Occidental has some other things too. Beyond oil price dynamics, Buffett is also very careful to invest in businesses with excellent management teams. Vicky Hollum, he's an extraordinary manager. One way Buffett assesses management teams is rather simple. He reads the annual report and looks for a CEO who is willing to talk transparently about the business. And that was the weekend when the annual report came out. And what Vicki Hollop was saying ain't nothing but sense. I always find diving into Buffett's investments fascinating, but it's important to remember that because of the scale that he's operating at, trying to invest hundreds of billions of dollars over the, the whole portfolio, uh, the types of companies that he ends up investing in are likely not the ones that he would invest in if scale wasn't an issue. And what that means for you and me is that there's likely many more opportunities to invest in really good companies at reasonable prices that Buffett can't touch, but that we can because scale isn't an issue. And you can specifically filter for the ones that meet key Buffett principles using Stockopedia's screeners. The Buffett historical growth one filters by a handful of metrics such as return on capital employed, averaging above 12% in the last five years, consistent profit growth, and low debt. At the moment, there's 160 68 stocks across the global stock markets which meet these criteria, including the likes of Accenture in the US, L'Oreal in France, and Games Workshop in the UK. There are a bunch of these guru investor screeners for quality, value, momentum, growth, and dividend investing styles, and you can see the performance of each of them as well. All of these screens are based on the investment criteria found in the academic literature of investment legends, such as Warren Buffett, Benjamin Graham, and Peter Lynch. And you can, of course, Course, create your own custom screeners using more than 350 metrics to help you find new opportunities based on your criteria. Here's a screener that I made with some of the criteria I use, which are mostly Buffett or Munger principles anyway. As I mentioned earlier, Stockopedia tracks more than 35,000 stocks across a number of global markets, so it can be a fantastic resource for people who are picking their own stocks. And if you are interested in signing up, you can select a plan that allows you to combine any number of markets that you want to have access to. If you use the link below, you'll see the three plans that are most popular for my mostly US and Australian audience, but you can also click the customize button and make any combination of markets you want. Just remember to use the discount code HH20 when you check out so that you can get 20% off any annual plan. 
and there's a 14 day free trial. So you can try the platform and see if it can bring value to your investment research. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below.